Coming up this week, Jamaica's men's sprinting may no longer be at the peak of its power, but we still have plenty to look forward to at the Olympics this year. I'll tell you why. You have to feel for a Marma Cloud, but would we really consider replacing another athlete that has earned their spot fair and square at the national trials? Let's talk about why that's a bad idea. Hi, I'm Leighton Levy, and thanks for joining me on another episode of Tokyo Take. In Jamaica, we have this tendency to believe that when our male sprinters are not doing well, the country's track and field is not in a good place. I think it's wrong, and I think it's a disservice to the likes of Merlin Otis, Juliet Cuthberts, Dion Hemmings, and Bridget Foster Hiltons, who flew Jamaica's flag high when its men were not that great. To a large part, we can blame Usain Bolt and company for spoiling us over the last decade or so, but when we saw what unfolded at the National Stadium last weekend, how can we not be confident that Jamaica will once again do well at the Olympic Games. We all expected Shelley and Fraser Price to do well, and she delivered and exceeded expectations with her speedy 10.71 and 21.79 times to take the sprint double. But do you know who excited me the most? Sharika Jackson. For the most of her career, she has been a 200-400 meter specialist and has delivered on the big stage, winning bronze medals at the Olympics in 2016 and again at the Doha World Championships in 2019, where she ran a massive personal best of 49.47. Word on the ground before the trials was that she was planning to step down to the 100 meters and that she was setting the place alight in training. But 10.77? Are you kidding me? And then before we could properly wrap our minds around that stunning performance on Friday night, she drops 21.81 on Sunday, the third fastest time in the world this year. By the way, Jacko is now the first Jamaican woman to run sub-11, sub-22 and sub-50 in the 100, 200 and 400 meters respectively, and is now ranked among the best of the few women who have achieved that feat. As of right now, She's a medal contender in both sprints in Tokyo because if she can improve on her start, Shakara Richardson will have yet another fast finisher to look out for. Oh, what a summer this is going to be. That said, I must confess that I didn't see the wisdom of Jackson's decision to step down to an event where Jamaica already had so much depth. Shelly and Fraser Price, Elaine, Brianna, and Kemba and Natasha were always going to be more than we needed. And that potentially meant that we'll be leaving a medal on the table for the 400 meters. However, after seeing Stephanie McPherson uncork a lifetime best of 49.61 in the 400 meters and Candice McLeod running 49.91, I'm feeling a lot better. Ronisha McGregor's 50.02 is nothing to sneeze at either. But this was McPherson's first time breaking 50 seconds since 2013, and at 32, she's clearly in the best shape of her career. Both herself and McLeod, who seems to set a new PB each time she runs on the track this season, are definite medal contenders. But getting back to the men, they have not been at their best, but I do believe that Ronald Levy, Damian Thomas, and Hans Parchment are definite medal contenders in Tokyo. Yes, Omar McLeod and Rashid Broadbell are not going to be there to challenge Grant Holloway, who ran 1281 to just miss breaking the world record at the US trials last weekend, but Levy especially has been looking good. And to those who feel McLeod should replace one of the top three, let me remind you that in 2008, John Public wanted to replace a certain Shelley and Fraser Price with Veronica Campbell-Brown because of the latter's proven ability to win medals. How did that turn out? It's unfortunate for McLeod, but that is just the way it is. Kudos, by the way, to Shawnee Miller-Weibo, who won the 200 meters at the Bahamian trials, where I suspect she was not being pushed in winning in 22.18. Based on what we saw in the U.S. where four women ran under 22 seconds, including a 21.61 lifetime best by Gabby Thomas, which is the third fastest of all time, and two from Jamaica, she will most likely have to run faster than she's ever run before to sniff at a medal in Tokyo. And we haven't even mentioned Dina Asher-Smith yet. The crowds might not be there, but Tokyo is certainly going to be hot. Before we wrap up this week, I have another question for you. Who is the first man from the Caribbean to win an Olympic medal in the 100 meters, and in what year did he win it? Hope you got it right. Thanks for joining me once again for Tokyo Take, and don't forget to like, share, and comment on our episode. We love to hear from you. See you next week. Bye-bye.